A couple days ago, somebody posted on Facebook how they approached a man wearing a MAGA hat and started swearing at this person. I asked, why would you do this? They claimed shaming people works. And by screaming at a Trump supporter, they're going to convince them not to support Trump. I said, no, it won't. You're going to make them dig in their heels and seek validation from those who do support Trump. The best way to change people's minds is to be a friend to that person so they're receptive to new ideas, not to insult them and attack them. But they disagreed, and the thread devolved into calling me a Nazi. And that's where we are. I feel like the left is its own worst enemy, because they keep doing things that hurt themselves. With the Brett Kavanaugh hearing, we've got people calling for mobilization and riots if he is confirmed. But we know for a fact that riots make people vote conservative. I have the data to back that up. We even saw riots all throughout the country leading up to the 2016 election. And I'm not saying that's the reason Trump got elected, but I bet it absolutely did contribute. We also have data from NPR showing that the Kavanaugh-Ford hearing roused the GOP base and took away the Democrats' advantage in the midterm elections. If they keep engaging in this behavior, they're going to hurt themselves more and more, and it's possible the Republicans will just maintain control. Remember how everyone was talking about how progressives were taking over the Democratic Party? Well, now we have data to show that these progressives did terribly. That's backfiring on the Democrats. So today, let's take a look at much of the data, not all of it, as to how the left has been hurting itself. But before we get started, please head over to patreon.com forward slash TimCast to help support my work. Patrons are the backbone of the content I create. And if you like these videos and you like the videos I make on my second channel, please go to patreon.com forward slash TimCast to help support my work. The nation ran this story yesterday. If Kavanaugh is confirmed, we need to mobilize like never before. His record indicates that he would stonewall movements against poverty, militarism, and racism for a generation. And they highlight this photo of people protesting supreme injustice. It says, demonstrators protest against Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., October 4th, 2018. The story concludes by saying, we must fight this nomination in every way we can. We must voice our moral dissent. If Kavanaugh is seated despite the dangers he represents, then we must mobilize like never before, this year and again in 2020, to vote out extremists who threaten our rights. Abolitionists didn't relent after the Dred Scott decision. The end of Reconstruction didn't mean an end to the fight against racism. This piece is calling for mobilization, highlighting protests. They do say you should vote. And to be fair, that's, the, that's a good thing about what they're saying. But they also say they need to voice their dissent in any way they can, in every way they can. By any means necessary and a diversity of tactics are threads that are common among the far left. When people get violent and smash windows, start fires and attack people, Many organizers on the left say, respect the diversity of tactics. It's something I've heard time and time again as I've been on the ground in these protests. And all this does is justify violence that strengthens the right. Yet for whatever reason, they keep saying it's okay. They allow it to happen. They won't call out the violence. Bernie Sanders, Noam Chomsky, and Chris Hedges have all called out that violence. New York Magazine ran this story in 2015. New study shows riots make America conservative. They highlight this image from Baltimore, Maryland, April 28th, 2015. I was there. It was violent. This image is an accurate depiction of what it was like on the ground. The story highlights that when there were nonviolent protests, public opinion on civil rights skyrocketed straight up. However, when there were violent protests and arrests, public opinion on social control skyrocketed. Is it a shock to anyone that getting violent would scare people, would make them want to vote for law and order candidates? And when the left doesn't call this out, is it surprising to anyone that people are going to say, I don't want to be aligned with the people who are violent? From The Independent, December 2017, Noam Chomsky, Antifa is a gift to the far right and U.S. state repression. Renowned academic says anti-fascist movement has initiated the use of force in ways that are completely unacceptable. Chomsky said, Antifa is very far from a structured organization. It is largely a collection of people disturbed about the ugly and ominous forces that have broken into the public arena with particular venom since Trump removed the cork from the bottle, the 89-year-old says. Associated with the loose Antifa array are fringe groups that have initiated the use of force in ways that are completely unacceptable and are a welcome gift to the far right and the repressive forces of the state, while also providing some justification for the absurd claim that Antifa is comparable to the far right forces. Unlike repression of the left, typically tolerated, repression of the right elicits great concern and sometimes support for the targets as they claim the high moral ground of defending basic civil rights. 
That's quite apart from the opportunity cost, the failure to use the opportunity to expose their doctrines and actions, and the threat they pose to civilized existence. Noam Chomsky, heavily critical of the right, but he points out that the violence used by Antifa and the violence tolerated by the left is only helping them. And I completely agree. People ask me, Tim, why are you calling out Antifa so often? Why do you make videos condemning Antifa? Well, I made a joke the other day on Twitter that if Brett Kavanaugh was not confirmed, people would go out in the streets, conservatives, wearing masks and starting fires and destroying property. And that's the joke, because everyone knows conservatives won't do that. Sure, there are some fringe extremists. One guy was recently arrested for threatening Republicans, saying if they didn't vote for Brett Kavanaugh, they would pay with their lives. He apparently said that he wants Democrats to be afraid to do what they are doing right now, and weak Republicans that do not vote for him need to pay with their lives. Yes, these things happen. We know that there is violence on the right, there's violence on the left, but you will never see, typically, far-right individuals, conservatives, right-wingers putting on masks, going around, destroying property, and starting fires. That's what Antifa does. That's what the left does. And so long as they aren't willing to call it out and stop the violence, they are supporting conservative candidates in the midterms. In fact, Bernie Sanders had to tell his supporters to knock off the violence. I was on the ground. I have seen Bernie Sanders supporters beat and attack old people. Chris Hedges has repeatedly called out Antifa. He said how Antifa mirrors the alt-right. In the past, he referred to black bloc protesters as the cancer of Occupy Wall Street. Which leads me to wonder, where are the regular, moderate, and sane people on the left to call this out? Obviously, Bernie Sanders, Noam Chomsky, and Chris Hedges are all there. But they're heavily criticized for saying this. Newspapers, media organizations, they run defense for Antifa. For the most part, not always. Why? All they're doing is helping the Republicans. So then people get mad at me and say, Tim, when you call them out, you're punching left. You're you're damn right I am. Because those people are damaging core values of mine. And the only other people willing to call them out for their violence tend to be people on the right. It's so weird. Look, we can all call out that extremist guy who threatened senators if they don't vote for Kavanaugh, of course. And we should all be able to call out violence in the streets. Why not? But I'm not going to stop there. Let's talk about the progressive wave. According to The Economist, far left candidates did poorly in the Democratic primaries. The vast majority of Democratic socialists lost to candidates approved by the party. I keep hearing from people on the left saying that the Democrats have to go farther left. That's what people want. They cite Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez as an example. But she only won by a few thousand votes. I think she had something like 15,000 votes in a district of 700,000 people. In fact, in Cortez's district, Cynthia Nixon lost to Cuomo by 30 percentage points. According to The Economist, data from Third Way, a center-left think tank, show that candidates endorsed by the progressive groups Our Revolution and Justice Democrats won their primaries no more than 37% of the time. Most of those victories came in places Republicans are almost certain to win. On the other hand, candidates belonging to the moderate New Democratic Coalition or those endorsed by the party establishment won 71 of their 78 primaries. Jim Kessler of Third Way says that voters were looking for fresh faces, not necessarily for liberal ones. And we can see, according to this graphic here, that since the 80s, Republicans have stayed pretty much in the same place, moving only a little bit to the right. But on the left, they have drifted dramatically to the left. Ocasio-Cortez has numerous gaffes. She does not have the experience, in my opinion, to be the face of this new movement. As she travels around endorsing candidates, but then makes these mistakes on national television, it only makes everyone look bad. And you know what? We're not going to end here either. Let's talk about the Democrats' call for the Kavanaugh-Ford hearing. That didn't help either. A story that I covered a few days ago, amid Kavanaugh confirmation battle, Democratic enthusiasm edge evaporates. The result of the hearings, at least in the short run, is the Republican base was awakened, noted Lee Mirengoff, director of the Marist Institute for Public Opinion, which conducted the poll. And while 538 does show, according to their deluxe statistics, the Democrats as of today have a 71.8% chance of taking the House in the midterms. Republicans only have 282 Let's see what happened after the Kavanaugh hearings. The hearings took place on September 27th. On the 27th, 538 was giving the Republicans a 23.5% chance. Following the hearings, it went down a little bit and then shot up to now 28%. It is up nearly five percentage points following the Kavanaugh hearing. So the Democrats might still win the House if you trust 538. 
but we can clearly see that the Kavanaugh hearings hurt their chances. We have two different statistics showing a gain for Republicans following the Kavanaugh hearings. And while 538 still says that the Democrats are overwhelmingly more likely to win, the Republicans gained five percentage points after the Kavanaugh hearings. The left keeps taking actions that only hurt themselves. Does this mean everything the Democrats have done has been bad? No. I'm not trying to suggest the left has only done bad things. I'm not trying to say the left is only failing. I'm just trying to point out key points where the left has hurt themselves, and it's bad for anyone who considers themselves to be on the left. If you don't like Donald Trump, you should be calling these things out because they are hurting your chances of winning in the midterms. They are hurting your chances of winning in 2020. As I pointed out earlier, We saw waves of protests and riots across the country leading up to 2016. In my opinion, those were huge factors that played into the election of Donald Trump. And a lot of people probably don't want to admit it. They don't want to admit the protests aren't helping. There's some weird video I watched where a woman's making a weird shrieking noise in the Senate building. She's getting arrested and she starts screeching. Why? This doesn't actually help you. You may be signaling to the left that you're on their side, but the moderate people who are trying to decide whether they're going to go left or right aren't going to be enticed by going to the left if you go further left. If someone is willing to vote for Donald Trump, they are not going to vote for a socialist. They're going to vote moderate either way. And that means you might get a moderate Republican or you might get a moderate Democrat. But you'll never convince someone who is willing to vote for Donald Trump that they have to jump all the way to the far left. And that's probably why we are seeing this data, these statements from The Economist that these progressive justice Democrat types aren't winning. And the establishment is because people do want moderate choices. A friend told me the other day that my posts on my Facebook are antagonistic to the left. And I said, why? If I say F Antifa, I don't want to swear, people will get mad at me. They'll criticize me saying, oh, you're punching left. And that's really weird because Bernie, Chomsky, and Hedges have all called out the violence. And Chomsky has even gone one step further saying it's a gift to the far right. How is my opinion different from theirs? It's not. The fact is, the average person on the left, the people who used to be at Occupy Wall Street, the people who follow me, are upset that their militant authoritarian leftism isn't working. And for me, I can't agree with that behavior. I believe in free speech. I believe in civility. I believe in nonviolence. I believe that we can make good change by communicating with each other. And that's the world we need to live in, not a violent, repressive one. And when I call that out, they get mad because they feel like it hurts them. But in the reality, My willingness to call out the left for their nonsense, for their violence, for their authoritarianism is probably the only thing that will actually help them win in the future. But too many of them are consumed with hate. They would much rather watch a video of someone getting bashed over the head than admit that bashing someone over the head hurts their cause. They would much rather pretend that smashing a window will end capitalism instead of realizing that smashing a window convinces people to side against you. And I feel like I'm a crazy person because I'm sitting here watching this nonsense. I go on on, on Twitter. I have a pretty fair balance between left and right. I have conservatives who are on the defensive saying, hey, man, we don't support violence. We don't, you know, that guy who threatened Republicans. They're like, we don't we don't support that guy either. But then on the left, you have people actually advocating for violence. And I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because my friends who are just your average people who aren't into politics tell me that violence scares them and worries them. And they'd rather vote for conservative and moderates than anybody who would endorse violence. Because even if they disagree with the conservative, at least there's going to be some stability maintained. I have friends who sit around playing video games all day. Do you think they're concerned with the nuance of our economy and our foreign policy? They absolutely aren't. Their concern is that no one's going to throw a brick through their window. And when they see their favorite shop, their, their cafe, their bank have a shattered window, when they see fires in the streets, they say... I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to vote for the person who's promising to end this, not for the person who's covering it up or calling for more of it. I'm filming this early. I don't know what's going to happen with Kavanaugh. I'm pretty sure he'll be confirmed. I'm pretty sure there will be riots, and I'm pretty sure that we'll feed into supporting Republicans in the midterm elections. And if that happens, all of these mistakes made by the Democrats, made by the left, their their unwillingness to call themselves out to clean house of this means they deserve whatever they get. And it is what it is, you know? But... Hey, for now, the data shows the Democrats might actually take the House. So maybe that's the case. Maybe for all of their faults, they still will pull ahead. I don't know. I'm just frustrated because it's like, listen, if you have a big lead, don't screw it up. 
I feel like, you know, if you've ever gone to Reddit, there's a subreddit called Premature Celebration. I just watched one where you had someone running and they put their hands up and slow down and then someone zooms right past them. Yeah, you might have a lead, but it doesn't mean you should just sit there and kick your feet up and say, we're going to win. No, it means you need to call out the problems. You need to point out the problems. Otherwise, you're going to lose. Anyway, comment below and let me know what you think. We'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Twitter, TimCast. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. More videos coming up on my second channel, youtube.com slash TimCastNews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.